Hi there, we're here. Start again. Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. Uh, I have three Albarinos here, or I should correct myself and say one Albarino and two Alvarinos. So, from either side of the uh, Spain Portugal border, uh, I've got one Spaniard and, and two Portuguese uh, Vino Verdes from the same producer, uh, Casa de Capital Moor. But I'm starting in Spain uh, with Laga da Severa, uh, one of the first, uh, one of the first Rich Bacius producers to really make an impact in the uh, uh, the era of Albarino, and uh, they've got a slightly different bottle from how they used to. It used to be in a, in more a sleeker Riesling-like bottle, and uh, maybe some of them were slightly tall and didn't fit on all shelves. Uh, but let's see what this one like. 2016 vintage. Uh, let's give it a whirl. And it's got the classic floral, peachy, ever so slightly. People, some people call call it spicy, but it's more, it's more uh, of an aromatic, uh, ever so slightly nutty character coming through. And it smells like it's going to be quite uh, juicy, fresh, uh, but with a bracing edge too. It's one of those classic flavours where they manage to get full flavour, medium body, and. Uh, um, so there's this sappiness about it, this uh, green apple, uh, ripe lemons and limes, uh, a little bit of uh, something that slightly more exotic, well not exotic, but richer flavoured like nectarine in there too. And this uh, nutty creamy edge. I think that it'll probably have been aged on the lees for a, a while uh, too, and it's picked up some, um, some creamy richness from there. But the finish you're left with is dry, clean, um, Almost pungent, and um, but keeps driving and driving and uh, just like holding it uh, like there's a spine there that's holding the wine together and making it um, making it very attractive. I'm going to have a finish off this glass, I think. Yeah, tasty stuff. Um, okay, so let's get on to the Portuguese too. Uh, I put these uh, they, they, these are Vinho Verde, often Vinho Verde. Um, uh, hovers around 11% uh, alcohol, but when it's made from Alvarino, they tend to be higher. So um, the the first one, the Spanish one, was 12.5% alcohol. These two, uh, there's like a regular wine and a reserva. Uh, doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean it's been aged in a barrel for anything. It's just a higher quality of vineyards and higher quality fruit. Um, so the one's 13%, and the second one's 13.5%. So this is just the uh, regular uh, 20. 2016 Alvarino uh, from Casa de Capitan Moor. Uh, let's give it a whirl. Now this seems less uh, jump out of the glass e than, uh, than than the Alvarino. I'll just put the screw cap back on there. Um, it's um, it, it feels like it's a little bit more tight and tense. Sometimes, uh, if you ask me what, uh, what I think of the difference between Alvarino either side of the border, sometimes the Portuguese ones seem to have uh, an extra layer of briny tension and it feels like there is more tense structure here despite the half a degree higher alcohol it seems to have similar types of flavors but they are much more backward it feels like a wine that i almost don't, not necessarily want to decant or age for a, a long time but uh, feels like a wine with extra richness but which is need going to need a little bit more time to blossom then when you come to taste it that's when that um uh, the richness comes through and it's less of those um, tense green apple and citrus characters that were in the uh, the Spanish one, uh, more on those broader nutty peach character and there's a floral, uh, uh, almost a little bit of honeysuckle in there that's, uh, that's adding extra nuances. It's, it's hard to believe there's half a degree alcohol more. This seems to have much more weight, much more richness but be much less uh, less forward and showy, uh, but still pretty tasty. Last one is the Casa de Capitol more uh, Reserva. Um, now, in terms of um, uh, what it says on the back, the difference between the difference between the two, uh, yeah, more granite in the soil uh, on this uh, the yeah, big maceration of the grapes with batonnage, um, soil covered with granite pebbles. Um, blah blah blah. Um, so um, yes, I think that this one is probably uh, maybe picked slightly later and gets that little bit of um, uh, skin contact to um, uh, maybe add a little bit more um, aromatic quality. 
it doesn't like when I look at the colour as I pour it out. It, it's not uh, had so much that it's turned into an orange wine, but um, it, it's, it, it looks a, a little bit more golden in colour. So deeper and richer than the, the previous one, uh, but even more backward. It feels like there's, um, uh, it, it, there's more of a core of something which is waiting to blossom, but I don't know whether it's um, from had extra time on lees and so it would have been bottled more recently, but it doesn't feel as, uh, as forward as either of the previous two. It feels like that there is something there waiting to pounce. And broader, richer, rounder, almost silky flavours, a really nice texture to that. Um, and what the skin contact has done is not uh, accentuated um, the aromas in the grape varieties, but it's added a little bit of structure. Uh, so there's a little bit of almost like chewy tannin. That's what the tannins in the grape skins. Uh, and it's extracted this peachy, more of that peachy, more of that nectarine character. And there's the floral edge there, there's the nuttiness. Um, it feels like a wine in, in terms of structure. It's got nice freshness, still it's lovely fresh acidity. The, bo both of these, I would say, have the spine of uh, citrus acidity. Uh, to, to keep them going. But this one feels like it's got the weight, uh, the matière, um, or, or cojones, I don't know what, I can't, don't know what Portuguese for testicles is. Uh, maybe that's a deficiency in my linguistic uh, catalogue. But it feels like, um, and you people don't, often don't think about ageing Albarino, but uh, the good ones last, uh, very, very happy with five years. And um, some of them uh, are even capable of going 10 years or more. That feels like a wine that, uh, uh, it, whereas the, the previous two, I'd been wanting to drink the wine, the most recent wine. This, if I had the wine that was uh, uh, two or three years old, I'd be, and, and there was an option of that, or the younger one, I'd probably go for the older one. It's got intensity, it's got class, and it hangs around in your mouth. I'm going to have another slurp. Yeah, it's very tasty. Uh, and rich is the wrong word for it, because um, sleek is maybe more appropriate, because there's, there's this... Um, uh, there is this richness of flavour, but there is this sleekness of structure that um, that makes that, that yeah it, it just keeps going and keeps going and hangs around in the mouth and uh, very impressed by that and uh, so I'm going to enjoy I think that one first later on this evening. See you soon.